In this video, we're going to cover selection sort, how it works, and then I'm going to show you the code for selection sort. So the idea behind selection sort is that there are two people. So pretend that there are two people and they are A and B. So the first thing we're going to do is put A onto the array. And then A says to B, yo B, find me the minimum number of this array. And I hope you guys know how to find the minimum number in an array. Basically, B will say, B will assume and pretend that the first number where A is at is the minimum number. And then we put B onto the array. So B looks at number 3 and says, well, is 3 smaller than 5? Well, the answer is yes. So now B says that 3 is the smallest number. Then B moves on to the next element, and B looks at number 4 and says, well, is number 4 smaller than 3? The answer is no. So B will simply move on to the next element. And then B says, well, is 1 smaller than 3? Well, it is indeed smaller than 3. So B assumes that 1 is now the smallest number, and then B goes on to the last element. Well, B says, well, is number 2 smaller than 1? The answer is no. Okay, so B is at the end of the array, and by this point, we will swap number 5 and number 1. As you can see, once we swap number 1 and 5, 1 is now in its correct position. We will start over, and this time, we will put A onto the second element. And then A says to B, Yo B, find me the minimum number in this array. And then B says, okay, we will assume that the number 3 is the smallest number. And then we put B onto the array, so B is at 4. And B says, well, is 4 smaller than 3? The answer is no. B moves on to the next element. And B says, well, is 5 smaller than 3? The answer is no. B moves to the last element. And B says, is 2 smaller than 3? The answer is yes. So now B assumes that 2 is the smallest element. As you can see, B is at the end of the array. And at this point, we will swap 3 and 2. Once we made the swap, you can see that 2 is now in its correct position. We start over, and this time, we will put A on the third element. And then A says to B, Yo B, find me the smallest number in this array. And B says, okay, we will assume that this is the smallest number. And then we put B onto the array. So B looks at 5 and says, is 5 smaller than 4? The answer is no. B goes to the next element. Is 3 smaller than 4? The answer is yes. Now B assumes that 3 is the smallest element, and since B is at the end of the array, we will make the swap. So you can see that 3 is now in its correct position. We shall start over, and this time we're going to put A on the fourth element of the array. And then A says to B, Yo B, find me the smallest element in this array. And B says, okay, we shall assume that 5 is the smallest element. Then we put B onto the array. Now, is 4 smaller than 5? The answer is yes. So 4 is now the smallest number. Since B is at the end of the array, we shall swap 5 and 4. And that's it. We have sorted the array from least to greatest. Now, the mistake that most people make is they put A onto the last element. So if you put A onto the last element, then this will be a mistake. Because if you put A here, then what is B going to compare to? Well, B will just be out of the array, and you will get an index out of bounds error. So the point I'm trying to make is that A goes from the beginning of the array, and it will stop 
at the second last element. So it will not go on to the last element of the array. Let's do one more example. So we're going to put A at the beginning of the array, and we will assume that wherever A is, is the smallest number. Then we put B next to A. Now, is 34 smaller than 63? It is smaller than 63. So now we assume that 34 is the smallest element. We move B to the next element. Is 25 smaller than 34? The answer is yes. So now we assume that 25 is the smallest number. We move B to the next element. Is 12 smaller than 25? The answer is yes. So we assume that 12 is the smallest element. We move B to the next element. Is 22 smaller than 12? The answer is no. So B is at the last element of the array, and we will swap 63 and 12. We move A up in the array. And this time, we're going to assume that 34 is the smallest element. We put B next to A. Is 25 smaller than 34? The answer is yes. We move B up in the array. Is 63 smaller than 25? The answer is no. We move B to the last element. Is 22 smaller than 25? The answer is yes. So B is at the end of the array, and we will make the swap between 34 and 22. We move A up in the array, and we assume that this number, 25, is the smallest element. Then we put B onto the array. Now, is 63 smaller than 25? The answer is no. So we move B up in the array. Is 34 smaller than 25? The answer is no. Okay, so B is at the end of the array, and we will swap 25 with itself. We move A to 63, and we assume that 63 is the smallest element. Then we put B on 34. Is 34 smaller than 63? The answer is yes. So B is at the end of the array, and we make the swap between 34 and 63. So at this point, you can see that the array is sorted, and we are done. Now, let's go over the code of selection sort. We're going to write a method for selection sort. So we have public static void selection sort, and we're going to take in an array of integers. Then we have the A for loop. So for int A is equal to zero, A is smaller than array dot length minus one, A plus plus. So remember how we have the variable A, and it is going to start at the beginning of the array, and it is going to traverse through the array until it reaches the second last element. So A will not go onto the last element of the array. The next step is to find the smallest number in the array. So we're going to assume that wherever A is at is the minimum number. So int smallest index is equal to A. Now notice that we're recording the index of A and then we have the B for loop. So for int B is equal to A plus one, B is smaller than array dot length, B++. So remember how B starts next to A, and then B is going to go to the end of the array. So that is the B for loop. So as B is going through the array, if we find the minimum number that is smaller than the smallest index, then we're going to update this value. So let me show you what I mean. We have an if statement. So if array B is smaller than array smallest index, then the smallest index becomes B. So what I'm basically saying here is that as B is traversing through the array, if the number that B is at is smaller than the number that we decided was the smallest index, then we will update that. We'll basically say that the smallest index is now at the location of B. After the B for loop, when B reaches the end of the array, we're going to swap the index of A with our smallest index. So we have int temp is equal to array smallest index array of the smallest index 
is equal to the array of a and then array a is equal to temp so this is basically selection sort let's test our selection sort so we have a main method here and then we have our array then we're going to selection sort the array and then we're going to print out the array after we sorted it so as you can see the output is that the array is sorted and printed from the least to greatest this means that our selection sort is correct now you might be wondering what is the time complexity of selection sort so the b for loop will execute all of n time and then the a for loop will also execute all of n time so all of n times n is o n square so the time complexity of selection sort is o n square for best case average case and worst case scenario so i hope you enjoyed this video and in the next one we're going to talk about insertion sort